Hey, it's Heather, and I'm here with my friends Norma and Jerry, last night of Madrid, and I am indeed going to talk about wine one more time. I just can't resist. So I'm going to start with three wines that my good friend producer Jerry here found for me at Fenevin. And I'm going to start with one of my all-time favorites, a Rueda. Why I like this wine so much? It's really good for the Amer American market. It says the grape right there on the label. Rueda is a place. For Dejo is the grape. We Americans like grapes. All right, so just a little bit for each of us to try. To me, it's a classic um, Verdejo. Uh, the similar uh, wine in the U.S., I'd say, would be Sauvignon Blanc. A lot of citrus, nice acidity, very bright, good with salads, goat cheese, really one of my all-time favorite wines. So I hope to see this stateside. And so you like? Yes, I particularly like whites anyway. You like? I like it a lot. Like it a lot. And it's cold. Um, it's cold. And cold, speaking of cold, I've been in Spain here. It's kind of toasty. So I've been drinking a lot of chilled wine, which brings me, of course, to rosé. This one is called Casa de la Ermita. The grapes are Garnacha, Grenache, and um, Monestral, which is Movedra. Really quite delicious, incredibly flexible with food. Um, if you are a big wet wine drinker, uh, and it's hot, this, this style of wine is the one for you. They are very juicy. So let's give a little taste, see how it's working. See, to me, it's a totally different flavor than whites. You can really feel the juiciness of the red wine. Delicious. But it doesn't have any tannins, really a low tannin, so it, it, the chill doesn't make it unpleasant. Really a nice, beautiful, balanced wine. Um, uh, this is a really good region, Humila, which I see a lot of in the state, so I hope to see more of this as well. Delicious. I like it. It's, very, it's, it's not I like too this one as well. Yeah, these and are good wines. This is a good wine. It's kind of in. Sweet. You're doing good. So, like, like I said, I have not, unfortunately, been drinking as many reds as I would like because it's hot and I get hot. Um, but here is a lovely one, and it is completely organically grown, which, of course, is very important to many people, and it is made with uh, grapes that are much more familiar to the American market. They are typically French grapes, Merlot, 82%, and Cabernet Sauvignon being the rest, which means it's heavily influenced by Bordeaux. Um, this is particularly delicious, and I think might make, you know, just a great match with the lovely foods we have here, some real Spanish specialties. We have jamón, Serrano, typical. Salchichon. Salchichon. Another form of pork and lomo. 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 It's all pork. They're very different kinds of pork. And you see it in, like the jamón, I see on pizza a lot, right? Ah, uh, yes. On pizza, they, a put lot it, pizza. they put it everywhere. Everywhere. It's, 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 it's delicious. It's very typical to have it with toasted bread, uh, tomato, little olive oil, and jamón serrano as a, as a breakfast. Mm. Oh, a breakfast sounds delicious. And here are queso, cheeses, manchego, which we talked about in another post, sheep's milk. You're going to see a lot in the U.S., very popular in the U.S. And this one, what's the other cheese, Norma? It's a very creamy cheese. It's called queso de tetilla because when it's whole, it has the form of a breast. It's very, very creamy, very fattening, very tasty. <laughs> of course, which will make it a beautiful match for the red because the tannins in the red go lovely with a creamy... The fat and tannins match beautifully. And in the middle, we have membrillo. It's, it's a similar to guava. Like guava paste in, in our side of the country. But less sweet. We have guava paste, but right, this less is... Less sweet. And I've seen membrillo in the States. You can get and this And it's very well. typical with cheese. Right. So we're now going to eat and taste. Mm. Mm. To my taste, this is very accessible to the American wine market. It's familiar. Oh, it's well made. I feel the tannins at the end, that drying sensation. Yeah, nice. Have some cheese after you have that drying sensation, and then it is really good. Mmm. It's delicious. Fabulous. Mmm. I think it particularly goes very well with this cheese. Yeah, that's the match. So, the thing about Spain is that it's the whole country has produ been producing wines for millennia. So, there are real distinctions but from region to region and they are antiquated unlike not antiquated but they're old and with long-standing ways of doing things whereas in the US 
you know, we're all relatively new. California versus Oregon versus New York. You really get a sense of the country when you drink from one region to the next. And um, even though when you come to Spain, you may see a lot of Spanish wine, it is, as opposed to seeing a little bit of Italian and a little bit of French, as we see in the States, you will explore a wide range just within this one country. So uh, that's what I have to say from Spain. It has been a fantastic trip. I'd like to thank Norma and Jerry for their tremendous help and uh, hospitality. And uh, say, for wines, for recipes, for much, much more, please hit my website, sogood.tv. Adios. Adios.